From no job to one of England's top jobs, Mark Carney, Canada's top banker, is jumping ship. Though Carney said for months it wasn't a job he wanted, today he announced he is taking over as head of the Bank of England. The first time in the 318-year history of that bank a foreigner has been appointed. What changed his mind? Apparently a personal appeal by Britain's chancellor, who says Carney is the best person for the job. Carney steered Canada through the worst of the financial crisis here, and many today are saying Britain's gain is Canada's loss. We have reaction from both sides of the Atlantic tonight, beginning with Shirley Engel in Ottawa. Shirley? Donna, it was a Monday morning bombshell that leaves big shoes to fill here. Canada's calm and trusted hand at the economic wheel wooed away by the world. These discussions really only intensified uh, in the last two weeks. After repeatedly saying he didn't want the job, Mark Carney says the decision to move across the pond next summer was the result of soul searching. Where I saw strengths here and confidence here, um, uh, I, I weighed that against uh, the needs and uh, the real challenges in the UK uh, and came to this decision. It was a difficult decision. Um, but I think it's the right decision and um, I look forward to, to the challenge. Persistent arm twisting from the British Chancellor didn't hurt either. He is quite simply the best, most experienced and most qualified person in the world to be the next Governor of the Bank of England. Yeah. It's the first time in history the Bank of England advertised the job. Carney becomes the first foreign governor in its history. Britain's gain, Canada's loss. It is our loss, of course it is. Mark has been a... Um, a superb governor of the Bank of Canada for five, more than five years. He kept interest rates at historic lows while warning about mounting household debt. Respected worldwide, he still heads the board beefing up global financial regulation in the wake of the economic crisis. So how do you replace a superstar like Mark Carney? This expert says he had the right mix of private and public sector experience at arm's length from the major banks. And you need someone who can take that stand, will not be, oh, well, you know, these are my former buddies and, and, and all these things, and you know, which we've seen in the U.S. Names already being floated, Carney's right-hand man at the bank, Tiff McClem, Julie Dixon, the country's top banking regulator, Bob and Don Drummond, former top TD um, economist not to who spent two decades at the Department of Finance. Whoever takes over, Carney's steering of the shaky ship in Europe right. will affect how steady Maybe our ship we, stays uh, back we'll home. A successor will be chosen by a special committee of independent directors who will make a recommendation to Cabinet. Carney's last day on the job will be June 1st of next year. His five-year gig in the UK starts on Canada Day. Donna? All right, Shirley Engel in Ottawa, thanks. Carney is taking the job at a critical point with the European economy on the precipice. He has his work cut out for him. Our Europe Bureau Chief Sean Mallon has reaction on Carney taking his talents to London. Sean? Hello, Donna. Well, this place is popularly known as the Old Lady of Threadneedle Street, established in 1694. In taking over, Mark Carney becomes the most powerful unelected official in Britain. His appointment is being praised as an inspired choice. It seems he got the job largely because of the strong performance of Canada's banks. Unlike the UK, none had to be bailed out during the financial crisis. It also seems that some of the internal candidates here were hurt by the scandal recently at Barclays Bank related to interest rate fixing. On top of that, you have the euro crisis, which has been sideswiping Britain's economy. All in all, the consensus is a good time to look overseas for new leadership. I mean, in the city of London, you know, lots of the key executives in the banking sector are from other parts of the world now. You know, I mean, in some ways, that's the strength of London, that it does attract talent from all from all over the world and I don't see why it should be any different even though obviously the Bank of England is yeah. a historic institution. Carney does have some UK links. He went to Oxford, worked here for a while. His wife is British and as the Chancellor of the Exchequer pointed out, he is a subject of the Queen. Carney will be applying for British citizenship but no matter what passport he carries, he faces a huge job. The banks here are still recovering, still facing a horrible image problem. Donna. All right, Sean Mallon in London. Thank you, Sean.